Like many other countries, the United States faces a serious kidney shortage. Healthcare officials and lawmakers are struggling to find solutions to help those in desperate need of a transplant. Joining us to discuss this heartrending problem are Monica and Caleb Davy. They join us from Washington, D.C. And here in our New York studio is Dr. Vaughn Whitaker, who is a professor of surgery, surgery at SUNY Upstate University Hospital. Welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Uh, and in the interest of full disclosure, Monica and Caleb are my dear cousins and uh, mm -hmm. beloved family, yeah. but I, so I really want to thank them for letting me drag them on TV. Monica, let me start with you. Of course, I have uh, been privy to this journey all along the way since Caleb was born, but you donated a kidney to him when he was just three years old. That worked fine for a while, and then it failed, and now Caleb is on the kidney transplant list and has been. F tell us how long and what the weight has been like. Sure. Uh, the kidney that I donated to Caleb, his body actually rejected it back in 2011. It's a delicate balance in trying to keep the body from uh, rejecting the kidney. So back in 2011, uh, he, his body rejected the kidney. And since that time, he has been on dialysis. So we're three years now on dialysis. The first year was hemodialysis. In the last two years, we've been doing peritoneal dialysis at home. It's done every day at home for nine hours a day. We do it while he's asleep at night. Uh, he's considered what they call a highly sensitized patient. So if you were to test uh, tons of people uh, <coughs> to possibly donate a kidney to him, it's possible that none of them would be a match. So that's why it's taking so long for him, because we have to find that right perfect kidney that his body will not reject. And I know from personal experience that it becomes a part of the lifestyle to be able to accommodate keeping Caleb healthy as you wait on this kidney. Yes. Caleb, let me ask you a question. Can you describe for our viewers how frustrating it is for you to wait? And there have been a, uh, a couple of times where perhaps there was some hope, but then you still have to wait. What's that like for you as a 12-year-old boy? Well, what's it like? I mean, it's hard. You know, I wasn't prepared for this. Um... You know, it's hard. I, I really wasn't prepared. I didn't know how long it was going to take. And, you know, um, there wasn't a, not a day went by in the beginning where I would just cry and break down. You see, it was, it was hard, you know, and I just couldn't bear with it. It was hard. Caleb, what do you find that people most often misunderstand about uh, kidney donation or organ donation? What people misunderstand, you know, People don't understand that it's hard, you know? It, it's not that simple. And over, over the years, I, I began to realize that. You know, I was so frustrated, you know? I kept asking, why? Why, why isn't it here yet? You know, you know, I asked my mom. My mom would say, you know, it's, it's coming, it's coming. But I just didn't understand. And, you know, people see me walking by, and, you know, they just don't see the inside. You know, they see I'm in a walker. And, you know, they see I've got problems on the outside. But, you know, they don't know what it's like just waiting for years and years. And, you know, and another year's about to come. And, you know. I know you're ready for one. Caleb and Monica, I'm going to ask you guys to stand by. And, by the way, Caleb, good job. You're making our family proud. Let me turn to Dr. Whitaker, who's here in our New York uh, studio. Here, just give us the state of, of uh, kidney donation and, and the number of people that are waiting compared to the number that actually get a kidney? So they, there's a, s a slide that we always use that shows the number of patients that are waiting and it's on an upward exponential trajectory. Right now we have over 100,000 patients who are waiting for an organ. And last year we only did 14,000. So the number of organs that are available for transplantation is actually stagnant. Um, that number is not risen and, in fact, has fallen. Um, however, the number of persons who are waiting for organs is constantly going up. And why is that? Because the truth is, as my cousin is living proof, we can all live with just one kidney. So really, everybody walking around potentially could be a donor. So why is there that stagnata uh, stagnation in the available kidneys for people who need them? Um, a lot of this is is through perceptions. Um, a lot of people think that one, um, they don't want their body violated in the event that they die, or um, you know, so they believe they should not, or they think that if they donate their organs or if they agree to be a donor, that they will be treated less well if they were to be involved in a 
terrible accident because doctors would shortchange um, their treatment so that they could become a donor. Um, that is absolutely not true. Right. And I want to bring Monica back in just at this very point because, Monica, you are a donor. I want you to talk a little bit about your experience as a donor. And also, Monica, I know this is very sensitive, but you've also experienced sort of the stigma that exists within the African-American community about organ donation. Absolutely. So when it was my time for my son, you know, I didn't give any thought to it. We had to spend just a couple years waiting until he was large enough for him to receive my kidney. Uh, as a mother, you know, you would, I would give my other kidney to him if I could. Um, but it's, it really wasn't a lot to go through the surgery itself. Um, the recovery for the donor is a little more difficult for, than for the recipient because the recipient is, is uh, actually becoming healthy immediately once they, they get that kidney in and the kidney starts functioning. It was a few days for me to recover, but living with one kidney hasn't been difficult at all. Um, if you know anything about the kidney, the two kidneys provide 100% of the kidney function. Once that other kidney gets taken out, that other kidney then provides 100% of the kidney function. Doctor what I have no, go ahead. Go ahead, Monica. What I've dealt with in my family and amongst the people that I know, when I put out that cry for help to see if people would get tested for Caleb to get a kidney, uh, unfortunately, within my own family, we had one or two people that got tested. Those people who did get tested, and I've had probably close to 20-some uh, friends or associates who've gotten tested, they were uh, mostly outside of the African-American uh, community and not even within my own family. Dr. Whitaker, let me bring you back into this. Is this an issue that could simply be solved if people would sign the back of their driver's license to be an organ donor? It would help greatly um, in making the number of available donors because sometimes families are in a situation where there's a tragic set of circumstances, a lot of things are happening, a lot of decisions need to be made, and then they're approached about this whole idea of organ donation. If this decision was made previously when you're healthy and when you, you know what you would want, um, it makes it a lot easier for your family to actually execute um, what they know to have been your own wishes um, <clears throat> rather than trying to figure out is this what they would have wanted? We're almost out of time, and I want to give my little cousin Caleb the last word. Caleb, uh, you're 12 years old. I'm going to brag on you a little bit. You were class president in the fifth grade. Uh, I know you to be one of the most delightful children, as our viewers are finding out, that I've ever met. Where do you get the strength to get you through this weight? Well, um, I just keep pulling through every single day. Um, every single day, I try not to cry, and I've been successful doing that. And, um, you know, just because I don't cry, I don't sob every day, doesn't mean it's not hard. You know, I'm not hiding or I'm not pretending everything's okay. I'm just holding in there, you know? I'm just um, getting in there. And, you know, it's been hard. Yeah, it's been hard. But, you know, I know one day it's going to come. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. You know, I could wait two years from now, you know, a century even. But I know it's going to come, and I know it's coming. We believe that right along with you. Caleb Davey, my hero. Monica Davey, also one of my heroes. And Dr. Von Whitaker, thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you for I having me. appreciate it. Way to go, thank Caleb. You. you did it, man. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> we'll see you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm so proud. You're watching Arise America.